Hello, my dear friends from America. This is Geraldo Lemos Neto from Belo Horizonte, Brazil, and I'm here to perform the program to know Spiritism. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with with you guys at the Discover Spiritism Network. And first of all, I'm going to talk about a little bit about myself. I'm, I was born in 1962 in the city of Belo Horizonte, the state of Minas Gerais, Brazil. And on my mother's side, uh, the family Machado from Pedro Leopoldo, they were very close friends, very attached to Chico Xavier. As you know, Francisco Cândido Xavier, as we all know, as Chico Xavier, was born in Pedro Leopoldo in Minas Gerais. It, the city distance like 50 kilometers from Belo Horizonte. And he was born there in the 2nd of April, 1910. Uh, we will uh, see him, as, as you can see in, the, the, in this uh, design, uh, he is known here in Brazil as the Apostle of Love. Uh, his works and his examples touch the, the, the hearts and minds of all Brazilians. Let's know a little bit about Chico Xavier, okay? As you all know, uh, Chico Xavier is was a medium and please uh, he was born in april 2nd 1910 he was from a very poor family including nine brothers and sisters in the suburbs of belo horizonte and the uh, city of pedro leopoldo uh, his father juan candido xavier uh, was a widow, a widower in 1915, when Chico Xavier was only five years old. He had a very difficult childhood, Chico, and he needed to work from a very early, a early age. He started working only with six years old, and once upon a time, he had three jobs at the same time uh, when he was so in a young age. Chico considered it to be an indes indescribable blessing. Uh, all this difficulty, all these difficulties, because uh, he used to tell us that he learned a lot from this difficult life uh, in a very early stage. Uh, in the next, uh, we can see, please. As he always told us uh, from the very beginning of his life, uh, when he was so uh, Lero, a, a young boy, he had the mediumship, very uh, strong mediumship. He could see the spirits, he could talk to them, he could hear uh, the spirits teaching him or uh, talking to him, and nobody would believe him, nor his father, John Candido, nor his brothers and sisters, nor uh, his uh, teachers at the school, and also at the work. So he had a very difficult first time because the people that in the most majority of them, they were all Catholic and could not understand what he was talking about because he always was talking about dead people, people that would come to him and, and say th things that were not understandable at this time about their relatives, about the kind of death they had, 
uh, some of them asking Chico to transmit messages to their relatives ones that were, were in, on earth so he had a very difficult childhood uh, and for that reason he was considered a very different boy not an ordinary boy I remember that uh, one, once upon a time in 1922nd when uh, Brazil was commemorating was celebrating 100 years of independence from Portugal she could told me that uh, the schools in the state of Minas Gerais they perform a contest on uh, a, on uh, a text and all the students from the the primary uh, f the, uh, the first, second, and third graders, uh, I don't know, uh, the, 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 the relative this in, in the States, but here in Brazil, as the primary uh, school, they were all invited to write about the 100 years of independence of Brazil. And Chico was, at that time, 12 years old. And when he was ready to write, he saw a spirit, and the spirit told him to write uh, this, uh, to copy what he was telling him. And Chico was uh, pretty much afraid. He didn't know if that was okay, so he asked uh, his, his teacher, uh, Mr. Rosario Laranjeira and she didn't understand this also so she let him write and Chico Xavier then just copy what he was listening from this spirit and this composition this writing uh, when Chico was 12 years old uh, was uh, was given the the bronze medal the third the third uh time in all the state of Minas Gerais it was considered the third best uh reading or the, the, the third best text about this subject and from this time on uh, it was a shock for the the, the small school at Pedro Leopoldo uh, nobody understood how Chico so poor and so not well prepared to write could uh, uh, be given the third place in this contest uh, and why he would be given the, the bronze medal so Chico told me from that time on in his life since the early uh, childhood uh, or adolescence uh, it forms the, the 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 group of people that were were against him and the other one that was uh, supporting him and uh, you can imagine how difficult it would be for a 12 year old boy to to have to to understand and uh, and to live with this kind of difficulties uh, as i told you uh, he was raised raised by his family in the catholic manner in the catholic church he as a young boy would go to the church would uh, uh, also help the priest to perform the the mass and he used to tell us that while he was at the mass he would see the spirits that would come from above and to bless all the the, the people on the on the church also when uh the, the priest was consecrating the the ostia i don't know the name in english but probably is the same and he would see uh, a, a very strong light coming from above and uh, blessing all also the wine 
and uh, the, the, the things that the priest would give all the, the, the faithfuls there. And uh, Chico would also tell us that most of the people, this light would turn off. But some of them, especially the, the most humble, the most simple ones, those lights would come along inside their breast, install at their hearts, and illuminate themselves. <coughs> so, since the young age, he was devoted to the faith. He was devoted to God. He was devoted to Jesus and prayed with extreme devotion. <coughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, he would not be understood by his father. You can see uh, an image of his father here. His, pa his father sought that they got the wrong child in the hospital when Chico was born. He was always complaining that Chico was not his son because he was very different, because he couldn't understand him, because also he would think that Chico was making all this up, that he was probably lying and uh, he could not understand the word of the spirits, the presence of the spirits, the messages of the spirits. And in many times in the early age, uh, Shiku would have to confront his dad on this because his dad would like to be to 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 take Shiku to a mental health facility. He only did not do this because Shiku was very fond of and very close friend from a priest, a Catholic priest in the city of Pedro Leopoldo uh, that was, you know, the, the head of the, the church, the Catholic church there. And uh, he would defend Shiku and he get the idea that was very enlightened that if Shiku got a job and if Shiku in even in the early ages of his childhood would help his father to support his family with money uh, earned in his jobs so that his father would not put him in a mental health facility so that uh, this was the, the main reason Shiku was working in very early ages since six years old and stayed in his jobs sometimes three jobs at the time and helping his father to support his family, that family was very, uh, you know, uh, numerous. Uh, he had nine uh, brothers from the first marriage of his father, so in his mother's side. And uh, his mother, as I told you, passed away in 1915. He was only five years old, and his father would give all his nine children to different people relatives, friends, neighbors, because he, because he couldn't support them. And at the time, uh, Shiku would see his mother. Let's see the other uh, slide. His mother uh, name was Maria de São João de Deus, and she died, as I told you, in 1915, Chico was only five years old, but he still could talk to her, to her, to her, and listen to her, and always was uh, receiving from her very nice uh, teachings and uh, all all kinds of 
directions. And at that time, Shiku was living with a go, uh, uh, a step uh, a friend, uh, a friend with from his father's side, but she was very a, a very brutal woman. She was not uh, very kind to him. She used to uh, perf perform like tortures on him. She used to beat him three times a day. She would uh, give him a very hard time. And of course, Shiko was five to six, and she he, she uh, was with Shiko for la like two and a half, three years. And those time from five years old to eight years old, what was the worst time for Chico Xavier? He had a very hard time with her. Uh, we call he, this in, in Brazil, she was uh, her, his madrinha, and, uh, but she was a very horrible woman. And, but Chico had the compensation, the consolation to see his actual mother, his real mother, in the spirit world and talk to her. And she would give him very nice words of consolation, of hope and patience. Let's see. So, and in one time, his mother, Maria de São João de Deus, uh, talked to Chico and told Chico that she would ask our dear Lord Jesus to give him a very nice angel. And this angel would come to his family to, to, to marry his father, uh, João Cândido Xavier, and she would uh, congregate all his sisters and brothers again into a new family. And this really happened when Chico was eight years old, almost eight years old, when his father uh, get, got to know uh, Mr. Cidalia, who was in then Chico's stepmother. Uh, as I told you, the spirit of Maria de São João de Deus appeared to Chico, promising that she would give him a new mother. <clears throat> and so it happened. The young Mr. Cidalia, Cidalia Batista was her name, agreed to marry the widower João Cândido Xavier on one condition, that he would bring together all his nine children who had been looked after by neighbors and friends and relatives so that she could take care of them as of their of her own children so mr cidalia was a very nice people my, my nice person he was uh, she was a i i could say she was an angel because uh, who in these days do this kind of stuff? Uh, she married the guy, the, John, the Chico Xavier father, uh, and asked him to bring about all his nine children so she could take care of them as a family. Uh, so she was a very special one. And Chico had a very nice time with her. Chico was very fond of her, uh, was very in love with her as a second mother, mod, mo, mother as, as she would really become, not only for Chico, but from, for all his uh, nine sisters and brothers. And not only that, Mrs. Cidalia, when after the marriage, with Chico's father, had more six children of hers. So the family uh, 
was growing from nine to almost f to 15 children and altogether 17 children with the couple and you can imagine in the early 20s 1920s 1930s how difficult would be to sur survive in a small town like Pedro Leopoldo in Brazil, in the heart of Brazil, in, in these early ages. So they were all, almost all of them were employed in, very, in, in, in a very young age in a factory in Pedro Leopoldo that produces fabrics. Chico Xavier himself took this kind of job uh, to uh, produce fabrics in, in the factory in Pedro Leopoldo and so that he had a very difficult time in the early youth also. Let's see another one. So this is the, the uh, the ending of this first program because uh, the we are going to talk from now on for uh, about the mediumship the the psychographic mediumship of Chico Xavier and I would explain it to you in the next program how Chico Xavier started to psych to be a medium of psychographic of or automatic writing as you wish uh, from the 8th of July 1927 on for 75 years he would do this. The first writings that he received were from his own mother Mrs. Maria de São João de Deus. She could receive through automatic, automatic reading the book Letters of a Dead Woman that was dictated by the spirit of his mother and was published in 1935 as his second book. And though it was a lot of faith, she had taught her children from an early age to cultivate trust and faith in God. The content of this book brings messages of love and affections from those who have crossed the immense sea of death, of death, eager to reveal themselves to loved ones who they left behind and to whom they preceded the great journey of life. In her visits to another planet or many planets, she brings far away memories that still sleep in our soul and indiscernible sentiments. So I would like to thank you all for this opportunity. Uh, we, from now on, every week we would uh, have a recording about the subject of the Spiritism, the Spiritism Doctrine. And our first approach would be the life and the works of Chico Xavier. I would like also to thank our dear friend Marco Gandra, who is here with me recording this program, and welcome you the next week with this program to know Spiritism in the Discovery Spiritism Network. So my bless, blessings for all of you. See you next time. Thank you.